everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Today Throws Nation. And what I wanted to do is kind of inject some different things that I think are super critical for our throwers. And the thing I'm gonna talk about today is this is what can cause conflicts between coach and athlete. This is what creates a lot of limit success for a lot of athletes. What I'm talking about specifically is abandoning something that's working or abandoning something before it has an opportunity to work. Don't abandon your throw. And that's the trap that so many throwers fall into. Like I said, they are doing something and it does start to work. And then they take a jump up and now they want to do something else rather than continuing to make that pattern even better and more efficient. And that's what we see all the time. We've run into that. Now, most coaches that are watching this, especially advanced coaches, will appreciate this. And I think this is a super critical thing for throwers at all levels. But you're going to see this with your younger throwers. And one of the things I think we see with a lot of our young throwers here at Airtay Throws Nation is they are coming into a good program. They they understand kind of who Airtay Throws Nation is, what we've kind of accomplished, that we've had a ton of success, school records, national titles, state records. Like we've been very fortunate to have a ton of success and we have rapid success. You know, last year we had a kid go from 101 feet to 170 feet. So what's the point? Abandoning something that's working. And in that latter example I just gave you where I'm talking about a thrower who was through 171 feet last year in high school in the discus, he was a senior, he rolled in and his PR the previous year was 101 feet. So when he came in, he was throwing 80 feet, 90 feet you know, 70 feet, like it was not good. And his thing was, coach, I don't think I'm gonna be a discus thrower. And I said, be patient, give it a month, and we're gonna see where you're at. In that month's time, he went from throwing 100 to throwing 120, 130, hitting some of those outlier throws. We kept at it, then the next thing, and then he opened up his first meet, and I wanna say it was in the high 130s, then it was 140s, then it was 150s, then 160s, boom, then he hit 171. 70 foot PR in one season. and that that is a perfect example. He had I said, you know what, you're right, you're not going to be that good. Now think about it. This guy was throwing, you know, 80 to 95 feet. I mean, this isn't massive throws. This isn't like to look and go, oh yeah, this kid's going to be, you know, 160 foot, 170 foot discus or you wouldn't have looked at it at that point. But it really illustrates what I'm saying. Abandoning something. Throwing is difficult because it's a motor learning patterning, right? You are literally having to learn positions and develop develop the motor patterns and the motor skills in its motor learning. Your body's learning what to do, turning your feet, moving your arms, sequencing, all of these things. And so for you throwers out there and coaches, you want to illustrate this, remember, don't abandon. This is the, I think this is perhaps the biggest pitfall that throwers run into, even to a certain extent coaches can do, because as a coach, you get this stress, you see your athletes stressing, so you want to get them to throw farther. And you may say, well, let's do this. When in fact it's working, and you got to stick to your guns. And what we talk about is a J curve success rate. We start slower, we build, 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 and then it, boom, and it takes off. So it feels slower at first. It's the faster way. Everybody likes to do things that create this big jump. But what we find is those are shortcuts and they're not teaching long-term foundation things that are going to be critical. I think if you took any of our throwers at the high school level that have been elite and they go to a college program, they're going to be able to adapt to any system because fundamentally what they've been doing is so on point. So that's what the point of this throwing chain reaction system and the six pillars. And remember, don't abandon things that are working before you allow them to actually click for you. That is the big trap. You want to avoid that trap. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video. What we're going to talk about in this video is by setting up that trigger and setting up the proper sequence, we got the athlete on balance. Once you're on balance, learning to throw is so much easier and that's where we break down our six pillars of the